Welcome to the Resilience Series. I'm Stephanie Weaver, the author of the Migraine Relief Plan and the upcoming Migraine Relief Plan Cookbook. And for that project, I'm interviewing a variety of people about the topic of resilience. My guest today is Marissa Zabieri. Marissa is a health journalist, speaker on autoimmune disease, Mrs. New York 2015, which we're going to talk about, and the founder of lupuschick.com, a nonprofit for people with lupus and other autoimmune conditions. Her book, Chronically Fabulous, Finding Wholeness and Hope Living with Chronic Illness, publishes on May 4th, 2021. Welcome, Marissa. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? I'm good. And thank you so much for being here. People with chronic illness often say that we feel like we got hit by a truck. You literally were hit by a truck. Let's start there. Yes, I was. Uh, so it was actually about 20 years ago when I was in my 20s. I was in college to be a nurse. I'd love to help people. I wanted to go into medicine, probably because I had spent most of my childhood around doctors and nurses. And so I felt very comfortable being in the hospital and things like that. And so I was in nursing school and I was living in Fort Lauderdale and I was crossing the street one night. And I did. I got hit by a drunk driver. Uh, who was driving a pickup truck at around 50 miles an hour. And to this day, I mean, I've had a lot of defining moments in my life, but that is surely the, I guess, the cake topper. My life was never the same after that. So I always tell people, you know, in just a few seconds, how dramatically your life can change forever. Yeah, and so you were um, in the hospital for a long time. You had some pretty serious injuries. Um, but then the police showed up. So talk, talk about that, because that is uh, a challenge that very few people have on top of a terrible accident like this. So when I was actually in the hospital, I, you know, I spent about a year in recovery. The first part of that, I was in the trauma intensive care unit, and I did have detectives and police officers come into my room a few days later, uh, which is sort of when I was getting somewhat used to the morphine and the different drugs that they had me on for pain. And I learned that they did arrest the person that hit me because this individual left the scene after hitting me. And it was actually someone that I knew and they believed that it was a deliberate action against me. Uh, so, you know, on top of just already mentally dealing with what had happened overall and how how many injuries I had and what they had expected my recovery to look like and how long that was going to be and that it was going to basically be taking me out of school and just you know my whole life was going to be different at this point and then to find out who actually had hit me and having to reconcile that um, it was a lot it was a lot you know mentally and just emotionally and physically. And I just feel like it, it really took the healing process to an entirely new level. And it also, I think, stretched it out because, you know, when there is an incident like that, you do have a, a trial and you do have um, different court things that you have to go to. So even though, you know, I spent about a year in recovery, it was still like another year after that, that I still had to live. It was like I was living it over and over again because it still wasn't wrapped up. Yeah. So there was trauma on top of trauma, which uh, is significant for anyone to deal with. So thank you for sharing that. And I'm very sorry that that happened to you. How many years after this accident were you diagnosed with lupus? And remind us what lupus is for those watchers who may have heard of it, but aren't really sure. So lupus is actually a chronic inflammatory autoimmune disease, and there is no cure. And it ranges, you know, in different people. Some people have a very mild case. They may not be on any medication. And there are some cases that are unfortunately fatal. We don't have a large, um, you know, selection of medications that we can choose. Most of our medications were created for other illnesses and diseases that we use. We do have one specific medication made for lupus that came out a few years ago called Benlista. And, um, you know, there are more in the pipeline, but I like to describe lupus as sort of, you know, my body is waging this war against itself. It doesn't see my tissues and organs as self, and it feels like it needs to attack it. And so it attacks it, you know, all the time. And if we have this long-term attack on an organ or a tissue, 
and it damages it, it could ultimately cause death to that organ, which is why sometimes you'll hear that people with lupus have kidney transplants and, and things along those lines. It's really different for everyone as symptom wise. Uh, when I was diagnosed, actually, it wasn't actually too long after I was hit. So I'd say it was about within three months. And, you know, when I was in the hospital and I'm being seen by this amazing team of doctors, right? It couldn't have been a, a better scenario in some cases because all of a sudden I start getting these fevers and these rashes and this pain. And the next thing I know, I have a small stroke. So these doctors are thinking, okay, is it part of the head injury? Is it from being hit? And then all these tests start being run, you know, is the fever from an infection and whatnot. And then we get consults with infectious disease and rheumatology. And in three weeks, I have this diagnosis of systemic lupus. And I always like to tell people like, wow, they're like, wow, three weeks, that, that's incredibly short. But the reality was that I had these symptoms since I was eight. So, you know, I had already been waiting almost two decades for an answer of why I was feeling so sick all the time. Um, so with a lot of autoimmune diseases, as you I'm sure know, there's usually a trigger. Some people it's because they maybe gave birth or they had a severe infection or was some kind of trauma. And for me, it was being hit by the truck. It was the ultimate thing that brought out all of the symptoms. Thank you for sharing that. I think it's really helpful for people to understand. And it, you know, I, it may be the case, I, I don't know, I'm just sort of guessing, but with myself as well, that, you know, our bodies can handle a lot and we're very, um, we're, they're sort of very forgiving. We can, you know, eat not great food and not get enough sleep and not drink enough water. And then there'll just be something that just pushes it over the edge. And so, um, so it makes sense that something as traumatic as, as a car accident uh, would do that. And, and yes, it's great that you got diagnosed relatively young and that you got help, but also that's really another challenge. So you were kind of dealing with a triple challenge at the time. So why did you found Lupus Chick, um, lupuschick.com? What was your goal? And um, I also just want to point out that it has a really different feeling than most online patient communities. So I, and I think that's partly on purpose and that's partly your personality, but I want you to talk about that. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. So Lupus Chick actually came to me in a dream. Sounds a little strange. <laughs> I feel like all of my good ideas come to me while I'm sleeping because it's probably the only time my brain slows down for a little bit. But, you know, when I was first diagnosed, even though I lived in Fort Lauderdale, a city of millions of people, I only knew one other person that had lupus and I felt so alone. And in those first few years, I was really just because I was still recovering from being hit. I was either hospital bound or homebound. And, you know, we've all experienced that now in this past year with COVID. But being in my early 20s, um, going back now, because I'm about to turn 43, it was so hard for me to not be out and be with my friends and be in school and be working. And I just felt so alone. And I remember, you know, the internet was starting up and these things called blogs were beginning and blogger, I think, had just started. And I thought, you know, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I am going to create a blog. And to me, it was more like, you know, in, for my generation, almost like pen pals, like where you would talk back and forth to someone. And I felt like, well, here's a way that we could do it. And they could be across the world. And we'll, we're able to talk about the things that we're going through because it was such, you know, I think getting like such an unexpected diagnosis, it, it's like water, it seeps into every single area of your life. And I think it's very difficult for people that aren't sick that are around you to really understand how it is affecting every single thing from how you feel getting out of bed in the morning and making yourself breakfast to trying to accomplish a full work day and then be there for your family or your spouse or whatnot. Uh, so that's how Lupus Chick began. And it really did. It just grew and grew into this huge patient community. Uh, we reach about a half a million people a month through all of our platforms. And I turned it into a nonprofit about six years ago when I was Mrs. New York. And, you know, we do a lot of stuff with scholarships. And, you know, like you said, there's definitely a little bit of a different twist on Lupus Chick because I'm very upfront. I like to bring people into my world and into my life. 
And I really want them to see the good, the bad, just the every day. Like this is my life. And I feel like for those that are new to lupus or maybe they're there because they're a caregiver or a spouse, it really gives them an idea of what we deal with every single day. That's great. So that was a perfect segue to my next question. So why did you enter the Mrs. New York competition? Uh, and, and, and you also won it. So that's very cool. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I remember I did my first pageant when I was 20. It was Miss Broward County uh, for Miss America. And I was young and I had no idea what I was doing, but it was a fun experience. And um, I'm, I'm pretty competitive naturally, I think. So maybe it just all worked out. Uh, but then, you know, once I was married and I, I really liked the idea of Mrs. Pageants because they, were, they weren't based on a talent necessarily. They were based on your platform. So what were you doing to give back? And Lupus Chick is my baby. And that is how I give back to the world. And I just thought this is an amazing way to bring more awareness about lupus because the reality is, you know, most surveys, 60 to 70% of people that you ask have never heard of lupus or do not know what it is, or they misunderstand it. They think it's contagious. You know, they're just not aware. So it was really a way to bring awareness. And it also gave me that push I needed to turn it into a nonprofit, um, which is how I was able to do you know, give away scholarships, which is something that was really important to me because something I hear a lot, uh, especially with women, is when they're diagnosed, say in their 30s or 40s, they're no longer able to do the job that they were originally trained for in college, or they have to figure out a way to work from home. And so our scholarship is for whether they're going to college or a certification program or a trade school or whatever it is, but it's just a way for them to be able to support themselves, which I think is really important with a chronic illness. That's fantastic. So how do you define resilience? To me, resilience is finding a way back to yourself uh, and hopefully doing it in somewhat of a, of a quick manner. I think that as, as we go through more experiences in life, you know, or more traumas and just these overwhelming events, um, we can learn from them and we eventually have this sort of arsenal of tools that we're able to sort of spring back uh, into who we were or at least where we were uh, in some ways uh, before the event. Obviously, there are things like getting hit by a truck. There was no way I was ever going to go back to the life I had, but who I was as Marissa at, at my core, that's what I had to figure out how to get back to. So basically, if everything is taken away from you, who are you um, with nothing? And that's what I think is really important to figure out because that can carry you through any event that comes later on in life. What are some self-care resilience strategies that you use to take care of yourself? When it comes to self-care, I love music therapy. I love art therapy. Those are probably two of my favorite things. I definitely need uh, some quiet time. And, you know, we get so distracted every day. So I feel like sometimes I just really do need to shut down. I've really learned how to say no. I feel like now I'm finally an expert at it. <laughs> I used to be really terrible at it and would put way too much on my plate and stress myself out. But I think with like resiliency techniques, just um, learning some stress techniques for you of how to reduce it in ways that you enjoy. Like I love, uh, I love yoga. So that's a way, and I love prayer, you know, and meditation. So those are ways for me to calm down. And I always tell people, I think it's really important. I'm a huge journaler, but I think it's really important to keep a record of your wins in life. Like even if they're small, because we're so busy on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you have brain fog from chronic illness, you don't remember all of the things that you've accomplished and you've been through and that you kicked butt on because you just have too much going on. But when you can look back at the list and say, wow, like I remember when I did this and that, and that felt amazing. And I'm really proud of myself when you're confident in yourself and you feel competent. I think it also is, uh, these are helpful tools for you to move on when there is something overwhelming in your life. That's wonderful. Marissa, thank you again for being here today and sharing your knowledge with us. 
please check out lupuschick.com on Facebook uh, and on Facebook. And Marissa's book, Chronically Fabulous, will be available on May 4th, wherever books are sold. Check out other episodes of the Resilient series on Facebook Watch, IGTV, and YouTube. And follow me at S. Weaver MPH on social media to learn more about my upcoming book, The Migraine Relief Plan Cookbook, which is due out in spring 2022 from Surrey Books. Thanks for watching.